as you've been a professor and you see some changes as the generations come in, these younger people come in and, and, and as you've mentioned, yes, we have a longing for the Bible, but it seems that um, the culture has, has shifted where there's not as a, as a familiarity in the Bible as it has been in years past. I mean, if you read, you mentioned the Declaration of Independence, but reading any of the Founding Fathers, there's biblical references all over the place. It, it shaped every part of their thought. But the younger people today seem to be uh, growing up in a in a in a shift where they're they're coming from more from a vacuum. Yes, there's some great Christian homes that are teaching the Word of God, but have you noticed a shift in some of the younger people where you have to you have a bit more work ahead of you? I mean, yes, it's the Spirit of God's work to teach them, but as a as a professor, do you just find yourself going, I, I they don't know this. I have to teach them that, or or is that just me in my head? Well, of course, there is increased secularization in society. Yeah. We know that by experience and by any sort of measurement, you know, studies that have been done. Um, so I can't presume anything. I mean, I think we have the, we draw the highest quality students in the world at Southern mm -hmm. Seminary, but I can't presume anything. I mean, for starters, talk about changes. I mentioned one earlier. Uh, most of them have never received a personal handwritten letter. That's right. Right. Uh, I had, and, and illustrations I used to use years ago, I can't use anymore. Most confessions of faith are very brief, you know, mm -hmm. booklet sized. The, the Baptist Faith and Message 2000, which yeah. our seminary subscribes to, is, is a little booklet. But I talk about the Westminster Confession or the, the Baptist version of that, the Second London Confession of 1689. And I used to say, Travis, that by comparison, I said those confessions were Sunday school quarterly sized books. I had a class this year. I said, how many of you know what a Sunday school quarterly is? Zero. Raise their hands. So there are a lot of illustrations and comparisons um, uh, that I just can't take for granted anymore. So even though we've got high quality students, students mm -hmm. that often are much farther ahead than I, they, they've already come reading authors. I didn't even know about until I finished seminary. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a strange mix. I mean, they've already come maybe already familiar with uh, Albert Moeller, with, with John Piper, with, with R.C. Sproul, with, with Mark Dever and, you know, things like that. And yet, on the other hand, culturally, there's a, a lot lacking. But the, the bottom line is, and we've seen this again and again, you referred to the American Bible Society's report. Mm -hmm. There is, generally speaking, a decrease in biblical literacy. And so we have many students who are way beyond where I was when I started seminary. We also have students that are at the opposite extreme. They, they come, you know, they, they have very, very little Bible knowledge. I, I found that illustrated when I was, when I went to Gore Conwell uh, as a seminary and, and uh, I remember being in line and I wanted to go deeper. I'd been in Bible college and I'd, I'd studied and I'd been in ministry. And a lot of the guys that I met had just gotten saved at university. So they, they had no idea, but I remember one young man uh, talking to him in line. And I said, uh, I said, uh, he goes, where'd you go to college? And I said, Moody Bible Institute. And he goes, what's that? He had no idea what Moody was. And I said, well, it's like the Harvard of Bible colleges. And I said, where'd you go? And he goes, Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah harvard well, of harvard well to further illustrate it uh we have our, our uh, southern seminary has the school of theology and that's yeah. where people go primarily if they're preparing for pastoral ministry or things like that and then we have another school under the seminary that's called the, the billy graham school of missions ministry and evangelism and that's sort of like everything but pastoral ministry you know missions worship leaders biblical counselors and so forth and so the Billy Graham Center, he was here for the dedication. You know, he was very supportive of Dr. Mueller when he came here in 93, mm -hmm. when, um, you know, it was a rough time in, during yeah. transition. And we commonly now have students who have never heard of Billy Graham. Oh. That's just inconceivable. You know, here's a man who 60s, 70s, 80s, even in the 90s, was sometimes number one on the most admired man in America list. And they today come, they go to a school with his name on it, and they don't even know who it is. So th that makes me feel old, but that just tells you, <laughs> illustrates the shift that you're talking about. 